podcast, I'd like to bring a story so many women can connect with and get inspired by. Taking a break from your career and coming back with full force is what makes a story so unique. Founder and the managing partner of Threlia Hospitality, running brands like Jones, Circle of Crust, We Idli Wale and many more. And also the managing partner and director at King's Group Ventures, Neha Anand. Thank you so much, Neha, for joining me today. It's Thank such you. a pleasure to have you here. It's really a pleasure to be here, Tahida. Thank you so much for having me over. You know, I recently came across you, like you started June sometime last year. Yes, June last year. June last year. And not even a year, it's like what, eight to nine months. Yes, and you're about already eight. in the top 50 restaurants in the Middle East. How Thank does you. that feel? It's the best feeling ever after the birth of my children. <laughs> Again, this is something that you gave birth to. Yes, I did yeah. um, from scratch. And I think the feeling, it's its really exhilarating, very deeply satisfying. Mm -hmm. um, just the feeling that you're able to create something out of nowhere and then, you know, to have people come together with you with the same kind of ethics and the same kind of... Um, principles in life and to build something beautiful that is being loved by people yeah. uh, you know um, I think that's the beauty of Jones everybody who comes there feels at home and this was my exact vision I wanted to have this restaurant that anybody who comes to Dubai feels that we need to go to Jones yeah. and um, anybody who comes once feels like uh, like Not I'm enough. craving that food and I want to go back to Jones. So this is Fusion Indian? So it's basically um, it's not fusion Indian, but it's Asian. Asian. Um, there are many things which are which have a very, very typical Asian touch, but there's always a modern American touch to everything because mm. Chef Kelvin has his whole French background and okay. he's Canadian Chinese. So I think a lot of influence from his travels, his stays in different countries, etc. Mm -hmm. um, it's really come together brilliantly. Yeah. And, you know, for it to be identified so soon into its uh, you know, venture into the market. Yes. So were you expecting this? Not at all. Not so soon. Not so soon, Not right? so soon. I was yeah. very confident of the food. Of the product, I was yeah. very, very confident. How that did you identify this? The restaurant, the food? The food, the, uh, the cuisine. So basically, I identified Chef Kelvin. <laughs> <laughs> I ate his food only once in life and I loved it. So you knew him from before? I actually did not know him from okay. before. So it's really, as you say, you know, we were meant to be. Meant to be, yeah. um, Absolutely, that's how it sounds. I ate it. Uh, long back in Bombay and I don't even remember saying this but my husband reminded me like we were having a family dinner all four of us and he said that he thought I remembered but I didn't he said you said it and I said I said what he said you said it that one day I will work with Chef Kelvin and I'm like wow wow I, I really don't remember it was that. not a plan I don't remember but maybe it was so deep in my heart because I loved the food that I ate his food has there's actually a lot of love when you eat it. It's, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you can eat the best of food, but it lacks soul. Mm -hmm. You're like, blah, like everything is all right. I it's looking as good. as a restaurant owner, I identify with that because, you know, even if the food is good, I think everything goes behind yeah. actually serving it. And when you, the ambience, the service, it all matters, right? Everything, the food. everything. The food taste. I think uh, if I have to see this from outside and if I go to Jun's as a guest, I think I will feel like I'm going to a friend's home mm -hmm. and then I would like to keep going back because that's the feeling I think everyone gets that and I mm -hmm. hear that a lot from people they keep coming back and um, yeah the food is brilliant but it's <laughs> also the uh, what Chef Kelvin and the whole team uh, who service the guests have created yeah. so it was just it was literally his food I didn't know him and um, identifying the chef is yeah. like 60 percent of your work done right? yeah, yeah 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 so and I just I reached out to him and as luck would have it, he was uh, free at that time. You know, COVID had hit okay. and everything. Um, I think he was going to start something when COVID hit. So uh -huh. oh, okay. uh, there was a gap. And I think I just, it was just the right time. And we oh, were yeah. right for each other then. And uh, and inshallah always. And uh, yeah, he said, uh, yeah. I think I spoke to him in April. And June, he had flown down to Dubai. Wow. So yeah, it has started in June. No, that so the next June. Next June. Yeah. Okay, so you took yeah. one year and tried. Yeah. So everything things, from yeah. scratch, getting the place, we were going together, looking for stuff, and then you know meetings okay. with the interior so designer and everything. In the whole process. Yeah, yeah, fully, and oh. um, uh, it's it's like a vision together. So. Wow. Yeah. So and you know what I liked most when I first spoke to you was the fact that you said you had consciously taken a break. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You were a teacher by profession. Yes. Right? Yes. And that you had a you had taken a break and then you were actually enjoying it. So 100%. that is. Yeah. So that is something I found so interesting and I wanted to delve into deeper because uh, in the current crop, you know, in the current generation, we see that a lot of ladies, especially obviously 
they are very reluctant to take a break from themselves mm-hmm. for themselves mm-hmm. okay because especially after you know having children it's 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 an excruciating let, let's be honest you know <laughs> physically mentally it's, it's exhausting it's, it's exhausting, a lot right? of work yes and then but yet a lot of women refrain from taking that break or you know actually investing in whatever they like i don't want to sound uh, you know yeah, wrong yeah, but yeah. but then i was so uh, like inspired by the fact that you chose to take a conscious break like even when you had uh, your thing going yeah so i actually i went back to working when my daughter nandini she was um, so you took a break up when you had your first yeah job. i took a break then and then i think she was maybe 10 months old or something and okay. i went back it was the most horrible one month of my life and uh, mm-hmm. because you know she would always cry and the daycare where i left her mm-hmm. uh, because we were a nuclear unit she told me after like 10 days she said you know this is my bread and butter so it's very funny that i mean i wouldn't tell you this otherwise but she cries from the gut she oh. said she doesn't just cry and nothing and she doesn't like anything at she doesn't months. eat at 10 months so i was like i can't do this you know this is I just, and and that and at that time to hida I needed to work you know like mm. financially um but I told my husband I said you know what I cannot leave her and I mean he's he's just such a great guy any which way is and he's like just don't worry just do what you want to so I made the call that day I said till the time because I just had my daughter till then I didn't mm. have my son so I said till the time she passes out of 10th mm. um I am not going to work I yeah. will be with her Oh okay. and uh, then I had uh, my son Arjun um uh, I think one year two months later so just they're two years apart and I took complete joy and pride in being a homemaker mm-hmm. even in the you know in school diary they say profession of the mother yeah, yes so I didn't write housewife I s- always said homemaker and mm-hmm. this is back back then when the term was actually it wasn't going, so yeah. I used to always say that and I used to feel why don't women give importance to this tremendous job that they're doing yeah. this is not a small thing holding not. your family together r- raising your children well and actually sending out to responsible adults into the society mm-hmm. uh, and then my husband started traveling a lot for his work and imagine yeah. if i was yeah. also working okay. they would just But be left to the nanny yeah. so i mean not saying it it was my personal choice i have great admiration and respect for working mothers working i mothers, really yeah. do i think it's so tough i just didn't have the heart to do it mm-hmm. um so i think i'm very fortunate that i got to spend that kind of time with them and um i have a very beautiful bond with them like yeah. you know they talk to me about everything and and i and i i think i said it on my instagram also that my favorite title is mom and it will always be so i feel that maybe maybe it was just the fact that i gave respect to my position as a wife and a mother and mm-hmm. i thought that i was irreplaceable because yeah. i think i was i yeah, mean nobody else absolutely. could be their mom so yeah, if i wasn't there for the, so it was a very very conscious decision and then after they left uh in i think 2019 and then so it's everything is before covid after covid uh-huh. but yeah, exactly. uh, that's when uh, when they left before i knew in 2018 that they were going to leave next mm-hmm. year is when i started kind of prepping myself that you know maybe i can start yeah. working again once start. they leave because both yeah. of them were leaving together oh they were leaving together yeah. so yeah this is what you know i wanted to come back to that you had the liberty to like or you had the choice to make mm-hmm. right but then in a lot of cases because it is such a cutthroat uh, yep. you know corporate society yep. out there so the women don't want to miss out on yeah. it uh, as much as i understand that and also like you know for you to make that conscious decision saying that okay no matter what i'm going to do this yes i think it needs to be said more because in the current uh, culture that we see it is very uh, difficult for women to make that gender like that act uh, choice that uh, i think it also comes decision. from a lot of insecurity i Insecure, feel sometimes yeah. because mm-hmm. like i felt that to ida when once i decided right, that homemaker is yeah. you know a lot of women uh, are reluctant they don't want them to they feel they, almost ashamed they feel ashamed and i feel so sorry for that and i because you know even when you could stand out in a conversation even if there was so much that you could contribute you know the fact that okay you're not actually working oh so you're not it's the people who that? make you feel like yeah, that very, and yeah. i had to go through that and i was so maybe for me it also came very easy because i always saw my mother around mm-hmm. so for me that is who a mother is in my yeah, eyes that is and there is no that. mother greater than you know i mean it's it, all moms do the best for their children but for me that was the blueprint of a mother mm-hmm. so for me i think and i was very secure in my own self um 
Fortunately, I've always that, been. Yeah. Yeah, that is very important. Yeah. How do you find that? Um, I think I have to. I I have been a fairly confident person since I was a little girl, but. Hmm. which i sometimes think and i cannot because such a small town in punjab you know where mm-hmm. i was growing up i lost my father when i was very young okay. and things weren't like the best mm-hmm. for me but i don't know i was just i was just this person happy go lucky mm. but i think a lot of stability in my life i have to owe to my practice of uh, nichiren daishnan's buddhism uh, ever since i started practicing it about 15 or 16 years back mm-hmm. um i really understood life so much better um and it really grounded me mm-hmm. and um i think owing to that i was really able to understand that what i am doing mm-hmm. is irreplaceable um i think my security in life comes from my practice if i don't chant um every day if i don't uh, you know like if we have our meetings and if mm-hmm. i don't go to them i feel empty within i can wow. be doing anything and there is everything mashallah yeah. there's a lot around but i still feel that that so maybe that's what that grounds me yeah. yeah 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 so yeah. that's what grounds so when me. you finally made the venture back into like entre- you didn't go back to being a teacher right? yeah. you uh, you became a full blown entrepreneur <laughs> yeah how like why did you go back into <gasps> teaching you know i i thought about it uh, mm-hmm. and it still is my first love if you ask me but a lot of time had passed and yeah. you kind of become irrelevant in any field yeah. right so um again that is why a lot of people don't yes. want to take that break. yes but then in today's times you have so many options exactly you don't become redundant in just one thing and not be able to do something else right there There's is so, so much you can just yeah. switch careers like that exactly. you just have to feel that this is what i want to do yeah So the only thing that I had actually constantly and consistently done and done very very well rather was eating. eating. <laughs> I had just eaten and eaten. Yeah. So I was like okay this is something I understand. I understand yeah. food. Mm-hmm. And that's when we launched our pizza line and uh, you know I mean we were I remember doing trials of circle of crust pizzas for like um months mm-hmm. and perfecting it and um my children i think were sick of it by the end of it they were like why are you giving no us pizza. so many pizzas right, to yeah. eat but uh, we did that and and you know after that i felt that okay i because when people would say the you know that little validation everyone needs when they would also like the same pizza that i love then i'm like okay chalo theek okay, hai so this is I, i get it yeah 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 so when you get got back into uh, like you know exploring like your options what you wanted to do how did Did you have the guilt mom like that guilty mom syndrome? No, uh, no. partly because uh, my children had left. Oh, they uh, left. Before. They had left okay. to study. Mm-hmm. No, before that it was just absolutely my timing. So I would do mm. it when the children were in school. So mm. um, when they so were you're there. You're not compromising on no, anything. No, I n- I've never. I till date do not compromise on my children's time when they come home. Um, Excellent. It's like. I'm mostly with them. Like there are days when you know my daughter's going to be twenty, my son will be eighteen this year. So there are days when they don't really need me now. To either yeah. you know, like they don't need me. My fourteen-year-old says, you know, me, you can go, you can travel, you can do what you want. And I, like, they're, at they're, this point, I feel, okay, have I become so irrelevant already? It, yeah, that's a phase <laughs> that one everyone goes through. It, it teenagers, yeah. teenagers, brutal. It really is. Yeah. Um, but I, they I come like back. It, yeah. But they come back. <laughs> they come back with full force, and you <laughs> just have to be there for them. Yeah. So even there are days when my son comes home and he's like, um, I don't go anywhere, and I'm at home, and I'll be in my room, and he's in his room, and then he'll just come out, he'll emerge from his room, and say. Do you want to watch Sherlock? And I'll be like, Yeah, like I'm here. Ah, Come. Oh, oh, Or so can I make cold, can you make cold coffee for me? And I'm like, Yeah. So I like to do those things still. So I mm. keep myself really available for them even yeah. till now. And I really want it to be like that. When they That's come so home, they should see Mama always there. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think that is a good message, you know, that can go out as well because it's okay to be like it is it is actually validating for the kids as well to know that your the mom is always around. You so know, you can always fall back. Yes, I today yeah. like I, in my 40s I have felt it more than ever that yeah. what my mother did for me mm. was I, I don't have a word for it. Like mm. priceless, priceless. Whatever the best words are because she put her entire life on hold for me. I you don't were a single child. Yes. And oh. I don't remember more than maybe three times that i came back from school or college not only like school kids of course but even from college when i did not eat hot food that my mom like made garam chapatis for me yeah. so i think now more than ever i feel it 
that has made me so strong yeah. maybe that also has got to do a lot with my confidence and security mm-hmm. because i never i i never felt insecure even though she was mm-hmm. a single parent. single parent i really never felt because she was giving me love and care in abundance in abundance and scoldings oh. in abundance too yeah. <laughs> but which uh, was making up for both parents oh my god and and yeah. i feel well, i cannot do 100th of what she did uh, but that just set the tone for mm. me to follow so i feel yeah. if if we as mothers are there for our children i think we're making them so much more confident and so much more um secure mm. individuals than we think we are so we're doing a bigger job yeah. than what we feel that is absolutely nothing to be ashamed of At, oh it's something to be proud of proud of yeah so to be available is like you know is one of what well, the biggest things that you can do as a parent absolutely. to be 100% available absolutely so when you got back into being you know a full blown entrepreneur now like into restaurants how was the competition did you feel left out did you feel that you were not fitting in no uh, i didn't think so much honestly no. i just you were I, just confident in your product and i just wanted to do this and i really didn't think so ahead like i didn't look at other people i didn't okay. get get uh, threatened like by food, anyone so i have to do this ah, i just wanted to do it because i love food so i said yeah. you know this is the only thing that i feel i'm uh, really really not proficient but at least efficient <laughs> so i'm like okay let's uh, let's just do this and i didn't think too much and i was taking and each day at a time on board because was he what was he also in restaurants oh no oh. no so he has many other things going for him but he's always uh my sounding board and he has no way out of this he will always stay my sounding board so um but this i handled mm-hmm. and um he was there like if i needed advice or something mm-hmm. but um and i'm so glad because at that time i used to think that i was so new to the whole thing that uh, like why are you not coming for this and yeah. he just said no you go ahead and do it you can do it well, yeah. and i feel that that was that yeah and i that made me really confident that i can do this i mean there are times when you feel really scared there are times when you feel nervous but um it didn't last for more than a few minutes and mm-hmm. you know one Because would just take it ahead you had a product you had a chef yeah. that you believed in right yeah. so what could possibly go wrong i mean like ultimately in a restaurant that's what matters the most yeah i mean that's what yeah, i think then, yeah, for me everything else into order is another aspect. yeah there's a lot that goes on but i have a f- beautiful team who takes mm-hmm. care of everything but with even with I think more than the food I had faith in him mm-hmm. as a person like he's yeah. a great great guy mm-hmm. you know um a super family man mm-hmm. loves his wife and his son and so our uh, we both love food and we both love family yeah. so it was very like we were just with two forces coming together they the same foundation yeah the same foundation so I think more than anything else I had so much faith in him mm-hmm. and um yeah and I knew that the together we will come up with something so phenomenal but you were coming in from india right you came yeah. from india how did you like why did you want to come to dubai why didn't you try something in india because that's also a huge market it is um so it's it's really funny and i tell my friends and some of them don't believe it but we come we came to dubai to launch circle of crust in dubai mall yeah. this was march of uh, 2021 okay and then the second wave hit india so bad india. that yeah, we so. just got stuck very happily happily and happily um, so. and then because my children were studying abroad if they came to india they couldn't have gone back because flights okay. were shut and all that yeah, so your so whole kids go to singapore they was in singapore yeah. then now now my daughter is in new york and my yeah. son will just finish his schooling from singapore now in two months um so it just so happened and then we just got to This live here this is a place of convenience yeah and yeah. i think it is the universe really works in the most wonderful ways because what better place than dubai really everything was working in your favor everything right? like yeah. jones was really meant to be and it's then that i spoke to chef kelvin because okay. i was here uh-huh. and because we were eating out and the restaurants were wonderful and the food mm-hmm. was great and um we were like yeah you know this is the place Yeah, and i was like okay this yeah. is where i want to start my restaurant yeah. so so you, technically you got stuck here and then you thought yeah. this concept would work better here yeah yeah i technically got stuck but i am am i glad or not <laughs> like it was wonderful and yeah. um, the support is great i like the community here okay. you know the food industry um everyone supports each other there's a okay. lot of love camaraderie yeah, it's really yeah. brilliant it's yeah. really really so brilliant. how did how do you feel about you know uh, now i now lately there are a lot of women in the uh, yes. restaurant yes. right it was not as much before yes. so how do you see the competition how is your relationship with the other people in the field 
I'm I'm not competitive that way. I'm mm-hmm. just competitive with my own self and I just want to be better. Mm-hmm. Um some I just feel very happy that so many women are doing so well. In fact, yeah. just the other day I had I'd hosted um uh women for uh, like really the movers and shakers of F&B like oh. all the all the f- women uh for International Women's Day and we all just had the most brilliant time mm-hmm. i mean and there are so many women now so yeah. many and yeah. it was just so beautiful to have that so all love the women are from the like top 50 restaurants uh yeah maybe um, yeah. but then but maybe not mm-hmm. there are some others also so because when that uh, the awards were being announced so many uh, ladies were yes. coming out and you know yes. winning the awards yes. it's so sort refreshing of to see it's beautiful and i and yeah. i feel that um it's really because women can do anything and it's so cliched but it's so true mm-hmm. that we can do anything that we set our mind on yeah. and we can do it brilliantly mm-hmm. and you know multitasking is like cake walk yeah. for us because yeah. we are so used to and i feel um really my training came from being nandini and arjun's mother because you know you're managing so much that yeah. you know you know that okay i, so I can deal with anything shop, your official chauffeur everything uh, yeah confident everything everything yeah. you are there diary keeper you're the schedule maker yeah dentist taker yeah, everything yeah, yeah. party planner party planner everything yes. and um, i feel that really really um, honed your skills mm-hmm. as an entrepreneur fully i i really give that time full credit and i enjoyed so that was like it was so good. heartening to hear it was good training because i was having a lot of fun <laughs> so did you find it uh, like and now do you think you will take this brand back to india uh junz i'm not so <laughs> sure but there are other things in my mind i still yeah. like were in fact i'm getting another brand from india here which is idli wale i'm uh-huh. getting that to dubai um so your primary focus is going forward to be in dubai you yeah. um we will move to other places too mm-hmm. but we have like maybe two or three similar like something different but mm-hmm. similar team yeah. we'll move forward and do a few things here it's a, it's a wonderful market the either mm-hmm. it's really wonderful yeah. uh, the audiences is re- they're really discerning um and yeah. uh, it's good to feed them when they mm-hmm. understand what food is right mm-hmm. um so also a restaurant business from you know like from experience it's it's a very tricky business Absolutely. you have to be consistently uh on top of oh, like, yes. cons- like you have to be very careful with the food mm-hmm. you know you have to be consistently on top of the game yeah yeah so it is and also in dubai if you look at it if there is a market for all kinds of cuisines all kinds of cuisines. cuisines and there is so much competition coming in and the day. nationalities there oh, is wow, so, like so much melt, yeah, yeah. So like the power of nationalities and cultures so then you know you can't really uh, first of all you it's two ways i mean there's on one side it's great because you get to know what all these people if they like it yeah. then you know oh if you have to do it individually in these yeah. countries you'll really do well and the second thing is to satisfy the palates which are so different so diverse yeah it's i think very satisfying at the end of the day because you have a nice uh, cuisine in terms of asian that caters to so many uh, because it's fusion right yeah yeah so it's just so progressive the whole mm-hmm. cuisine that and also uh, to tweak it a works. bit here and there yeah and we keep doing that mm-hmm. based on what people like and stuff yeah. uh, we're very receptive to that but uh, it's just it's heartening to see that yeah. different nationalities come together and they enjoy like and it's yeah. it's just great to do that to be able to so do that so now you are enjoying the dubai life you have completely been bought over by dubai <laughs> yeah, yeah fully <laughs> <laughs> so do you see yourself going back and uh, doing more stuff in india Yeah I will just bringing bands from Ah no I will be I will be continuing to I I will continue mm-hmm. to do that uh, we we've just taken circle of cross to chandigarh and okay. I plan to so take it to So that's happening as well in the Yes back. yes 100% uh, So the three layer hospitality is based out of India the th- it's based out of here in okay. dubai mm-hmm. so um, so that's a company you founded in Yes started. yes and there's a lot more coming uh, uh, in that there's an ice cream brand back in India that's that will be launched soon um we have so a you're shuttling between two countries yes. starting this one well. yeah and it's it's just it's lovely i have all the time to do it yeah, so, so now you are engaged with uh, your third child the three layer hospital 100% this is my third child and yeah. it's it's called three layer yeah yeah, yeah. Ah, so make sense yeah it, it does so how is it working with your husband closely i mean like how is that relationship because my husband and i like if we come to do anything together it's like we cannot see i do i own any strategy <laughs> and then we have a, our partner who comes in and settles us both <laughs> that's okay so how cute. is it like with you guys um it's really wonderful it is um thing is uh, kartik my husband's name is kartik and he's um he's actually a very very calm balanced person and he's been working for much longer than i have so he's so beautiful to see you guys together by the way <laughs> thank you yeah mashallah yeah thank you so um and we've been together for what it seems like forever okay. i'm in touch with wow. and um 
he has a lot of experience behind him and apart from that experience he has an inherent wisdom mm-hmm. so it's just it's amazing that i have a sounding board and and yeah there are times when he says something and i don't agree with it and then i'm like no this is not the way yeah. and but we come around to kind of figuring out that maybe what i was yeah. saying was correct or what he's yeah. saying is correct it's honestly more he's more correct Great now I'm putting it on record oh my god <laughs> but uh, so i'll edit that clip out probably said it kartik but uh, yeah. it's it's actually a wonderful because i'm learning a lot from him yeah. i'm really and in fact that's why i was telling my children who are studying uh, business my, mm-hmm. my son will also be studying that and i told them that you know there can be no better mentor than your dad mm-hmm. like just work wow. with him he yeah. nobody can teach you what he can teach you he's really wonderful because he's learned it the hard way he's learned it the hard way he started yeah. working when he was 16 so wow. he's really yeah. learned so it no the hard way so no textbook can give you that kind of experience absolutely or, yeah, absolutely so he has really learned it and learned it well and uh, i think i'm very fortunate that i get to spend time with him work wise work wise you know? as well so he's um, also moved to dubai with his work yeah 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 mm-hmm. his work his work is everywhere so it's very easy for him to What fly in do? and out from dubai there are many things that okay, he does like okay. uh, and so he has to go to india we have offices in um, the us oh, okay. uh, london singapore so this is actually easy for it's you very easy. it's very easy well connected it's very well connected so it's so easy to travel and for mm-hmm. him also he's just landed from japan in the morning okay. and i haven't met him yet <laughs> but um, yeah so we try and take out our time to do things and it's 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 a busy life it's a busy life. yeah but it's good it's good and it also helps that you guys are in dubai yes so everything you know the in and out is easy absolutely very very easy yeah so how do you find the marketing and the influencer culture in dubai hmm it's actually when initially when i'd come here yeah. i would think that um wow like this is a lot like in india nobody cares so much really right yeah That's no what i thought i don't i don't see uh, the kind of craze around influencers here that no. is here is it, yeah. it's not as much it's in legit india. over here like it's yeah. like proper like and when they and say is, something yeah. people are actually influenced influence so i like that yeah. because terminology is actually validated right? so i yeah. like that because in the sense that they are actually influencing people but what i feel is when it's too much like you can just keep buying it then i feel it loses its, its authenticity mm-hmm. and um i don't know i have my f- own feelings about that but uh, it's nice it's because nice everybody is selling everybody on your feed is selling something everybody yeah. and that can kind of get to you sometimes yeah it does it does <laughs> because it's a lot it's and a sometimes lot. there are people who are not uh, involving influencers but their product is ad- as good so yeah. i feel that they shouldn't and, be left behind and they don't get a market if it's yeah. not through this yeah, yeah. just yesterday my, a friend of mine told me uh, about a cafe and i said how come i've never heard about it and you're praising it so much she said yeah because they don't use any influencers or anything yeah. and i'm like and and then the uh, i mean like for them to get to the audience is even harder because it's the harder. slow growth yeah but the, the but the growth is slow but i have a strong it's belief right. if the if your product is good it will you can keep it wherever but people will come to you mm-hmm. so imagine she told me about it but and nobody has a patience now neha that's the problem is the everybody, world of instant yeah. gratification instant gratification everybody wants their product to be out there instantly I, but i think the long secret long-term. to long term success is not indulging in this instant kind of mentality and it really takes time to build good things and one shouldn't shy away from that i feel it mm-hmm. it does take time you yeah. can't see and i think easy come easy go so if you're really going to be like no this is it yesterday i launched it and today this is happening yeah. and then you know you become complacent it's not going to take you anywhere mm-hmm. so i mean we have to keep working hard and yeah. just I, being I patient this because you have these brands and obviously for it to yeah, yeah for it so many people they send us all kinds of requests and we're like we're really trying to go the organic way yeah. because so you, don't, you haven't really indulged in this um, marketing not so much okay. not the way people do um it's been honestly for us it's it's funny but even when jun started initially everybody came and they started reviewing it and people mm-hmm. thought you know we were calling them in but okay. we really hadn't at that time mm-hmm. like we they were just like up, i think it was during the covid right after that but after, yeah. yeah yeah june 2022, 2022 we were oh, out yeah, of so it yeah dubai was we are yeah, yeah. Dubai, oh my yeah. god yeah <laughs> in india the lockdown lasted the longest it yes. was really yeah i mean not what it was in hong kong and china I, but yeah. still but india was like it was, like, it was yeah I came here at that time and that's when I went to a restaurant after so long. Yeah. So 
we were getting all kinds of proposals but we really went the organic when i'm glad we did because did, yeah. we got real feedback mm -hmm. uh, and we were able to also it tweak slow, things yeah so mm. also it is slow for you to actually make any corrections if there is yeah. right because once the review is out and it's like uh, people just start streaming in it's yeah. difficult for you to manage yeah we wanted to yeah. really be like and it was and we were very fortunate that when you believe in your product yes Yes, it was the belief mm -hmm. that, you know, and sometimes there are times when people have written some very crappy reviews and they don't bother me because I know mm -hmm. it's just, it's not true. It's not so true. it's all right. You can't let everything rattle you. And you and cannot you know, keep everyone happy. You cannot. And it's all right. You know, mm -hmm. you may love a restaurant so much and I may go there and be like, what was Tahira even saying? Like, yeah. I don't like this food. Mm -hmm. So it's really okay. That doesn't necessarily mean that the food was bad. Yeah, it's, it's just a very a personal yeah. like, dislike. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't get rattled by it and we just keep doing our thing. Um, that's more important. Yeah, because, you know, this this influencer, or the kind of investment that's happening in it yeah, is it's crazy. It's so crazy. It's so real. And you want to know like what like proper restaurant owners and winners like you actually think about it. Because yeah. it actually sets a precedent for other people who want to actually go that way. Yeah, this is what I, I mean. This, I, is, this is my personal opinion. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so now let's move on to a quick takes. Obviously, I need fun answers and quick <laughs> answers at that. What is your favorite restaurant in Dubai outside of Jun's and Circle of Crust? Kinoya. Kinoya. Oh yes, <laughs> I've been to Kinoya. Yeah, though, that's my hands down my food. favorite. Yeah. Yeah, I love the eggplant. Oh, yeah, the, and that meat skewer thing, right? The, the egg yolk. I don't know what it's called. The the sukune. Yes, oh, it's beautiful. It's so yeah, good. yeah, yeah. 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 So what is the worst critique you've ever received? Regarding my work? No, overall. Overall. Um, I don't want to necessarily stick to your work. Necessarily. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I think many people who would not know me would always think that I'm very proud. And they would say she's very snooty and I'm not snooty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was one thing that used to affect me. Not mm -hmm. that um, they may have said worse things, but that. I'm not a snooty person. I'm not arrogant. So it's just that, yeah, if you don't know me, probably you'll think like that. So yeah. maybe that. I'm trying to think I've... But God. what can you do to correct it, right? Because that's who, how you are. Yeah, and, and, it's, and when they would... And I would come to know because when they would m meet me and then talk to me, they would be like, oh, you're not at all what we thought you were. Ah. So that would get corrected. Yeah. But I, I'm thinking maybe that would impact me a little because I'm not that person. Okay. Uh, and if somebody would... Uh, like I remember once somebody said that, oh, she's lying. And we were younger, much younger then. And in an argument. And I just said, I do not lie. Because I am I take pride in being an honest person. And I was very hurt that do not say that. Yeah. Um, mm. So I think, and work, I don't care. I mean, whatever they're saying, we just yes, take I mean. it in a stride. And we just move forward and try mm. and make us ourselves better. Yeah. So what is something that you believe in most people disagree with? I, I like asking that question. It's... It kind of puts people in a sport. Yeah. <laughs> what do I, most people disagree with? Mm, yeah, you've really caught me there. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of something serious. I think the fact that I believe that life, that you can make your life with your own karma. Mm. And most people believe in an outside magical Almost, intervention. yeah, divine intervention. But I do not believe in that. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that if you're doing good, mm -hmm. it comes back to you. So mm -hmm. I believe in karma massively. Karma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not in a negative manner, but in a very yeah. positive manner. But most people would disagree because they feel, they believe in destiny and they believe in um, magic will happen and stuff like that. So maybe that. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but this is not the best answer, I'm thinking. Uh <laughs> I don't know. Okay, uh, yeah. so while at it, the next one, which is more preferable, being nice or being fair? Being fair. Yeah. Yeah, being fair. So even um, if it's hurtful, yeah. Yeah, Makes you sense, can you right? can say it in a way. I, I mean, nice I'd rather. I don't want to comfort you with a lie. Mm -hmm. If you're close to me and if yeah. you're my friend, I will always be honest. Okay. So now you've spoken about like how you get along very well with your husband. You are, mm -hmm. like you know you understand. So what is your tip to be a perfect partner? Oh my God, not saying I'm a perfect partner at all. <laughs> but I think, um, I think just being patient and just being there for your partner is so mm -hmm. important. Um, and having, I have to say that I have learned so much about how to be a great partner from my husband. Oh, um, that's so sweet. Yeah, I think just people are not present, I feel. Mm -hmm. They're not in, in present a in a relationship. Anymore. Yeah, I think now... 
it's people are not in a moment they're not absorbing or grasping a moment as such yeah. you know, they're all over the place they're all over the place and they're like in hustle to do it and it's a yeah. fight always like it's why fight. does the husband have to be better or why does the wife have to be better yeah. i mean why can't yeah. both be great in well, their own right and you know and great together in great together so i feel like when he's doing something amazing i don't think twice before saying that he's the best and if i'm doing likewise he will say it so yeah. so i think just being tolerant to each other's flaws each and just other. being yeah. there for each other and being present in the moment i think is so important yeah just being present right just being present i think that itself is so much of an ask now it's come to that point it's come to that point yeah okay so now one thing you can live without as in food or as in no no not food thing yeah something materialistic that you're so dependent on that you can live without i can't live without i'm thinking can live without i'm thinking i can live without can. i can live yeah, without yeah I can live without there's nothing that i'm so dependent on yeah maybe my lip balm like <laughs> no um yeah i can live without there's nothing i'm so dependent on yeah a thing thing specially mm-hmm. nothing materialistic yeah my my worth or I my your, nothing i uh, think your belief in you said the buddhism i think a lot of it comes from that as well yes yeah there is a sense of Yeah because I, if I have my practice yeah. I can create anything again so I don't really worry yeah, yeah. it can be anything I read uh, because after I spoke to you I tried to understand that belief okay. and I I like how it is very serene and calming mm. right because it, it doesn't talk about anything else it talks about you know owning yourself yes. and empowering, and empowering you. yourself that whatever and, and it is is within regardless me regardless so. of what's happening outside it's all about you know yeah. positioning yourself yeah. ready for the world absolutely yeah. absolutely and so I, I like that so there is really nothing like i can yeah. name so have you ever been too hard on yourself while starting your uh, business there have been times when i've really questioned so many things mm-hmm. but i can say that i have bounced back quickly mm-hmm. i haven't dwelled on that for long mm-hmm. um there are still days to hida when i feel like something happens and i feel like this is this is a feeling that i don't want to feel again mm-hmm. but then instead of dwelling on it i just have to really decide mm-hmm. that i have to change myself because i don't want to feel like this mm-hmm. so yeah again you know I, that, that is something i wanted to ask you by the way because you saw success easy, like you know early on with juns so how do you, how, how do you think you would deal with you know failure Oh I've dealt with so much uh, earlier as a little girl and then even after I got married that now I'm not scared of it. Uh, I don't want to be there again because nobody wants to mm-hmm. but it doesn't it doesn't so intimidate it's not about me. So what you want to right if it comes to like how do you deal with it? Mm, I guess I'll deal with it when I reach there. <laughs> it's touch with everything's been that. great. Yeah. yeah, everything's been great and uh, like I said there are ups and downs. Yeah, there are ups but and downs. um as I mean, long like, as in any journey there's in any journey. Yeah. But I think I I feel and I was telling my son a few days back that you know uh, he was upset about something and I told him that if you know when we work out and if your core is strong you don't really fall easily. You yeah. can do any exercise the trainer tells you strengthen your core. Wow. So I feel that this my core is my family, my mother and uh, my practice of natural Buddhism. So if these are in place i mean i can i think i can deal with anything you're sorted for the i'm sorted yeah Shabba. yeah that, that's a, that's a lovely way to approach any yeah. adversity right thanks so how different do you think your life would have been if you were a man um i don't know no it would have been the same apart from the few things that men get so easily and mm. maybe as a when i was growing up mm. maybe ah, yeah. then it would have been yeah i would have got a lot more liberty to do things that i didn't as a girl mm-hmm. um growing up in a very small town but if i look at it now i really don't see the difference i yeah. feel that now you've, you've taken your time to come out as a full rounded person that you yeah, yeah i don't see anything that would have happened differently but yeah as as a little girl growing up yeah there would be many things i would be allowed to stay out till late for one yeah i think that 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 comes with being like a boy in india that you get yeah. you have all the liberty versus yeah. the girls but i think that is how india is yeah that's a very a, indian thing yeah indian. so that's a very indian so thing i think if you were here it's pretty much the same it's pretty much the same, the same. so yeah. really nothing so and the last one what does one need to be happy fame power or money and these are your options these are my only options only options but one doesn't need any of these to be happy but if i have to choose but happiness doesn't come from these 
uh, happiness What would make you relatively happier out in in, in the in three? three yeah money then i guess yeah. i guess like if i have to come to it do not edit it <laughs> it, it is only because the options are these three otherwise yeah. the happiness will not come from this but i and as you're your a bollywood fan and yeah. i am too and i was listening to and i really love shahrukh khan and you love him oh, too because i do so he was saying this lovely thing uh, and mm. he said you know uh, he was i think saying this to some graduating class and he said that um, all kinds of uh, stupid things like uh, money is not important and all these philosophical things please do that say that only when you have made money <laughs> because yeah that's true like you yeah. cannot uh, you know if if you're fighting for your basics mm -hmm. you really can't think of happiness but it's not a definition of happiness but yeah if it comes to it you need money it's mm -hmm. not like you don't need it there's yeah. so many things can be accomplished if you have the yeah. resources to do so and yeah. in fact when you have the money you can also help so many more people mm -hmm. who are in need mm -hmm. uh, which you won't be able to do otherwise so and yeah. that really uh, that's really something that gives me joy yeah yeah thank you so much neha for your time today it was lovely talking to you and i want to appreciate and you know again uh, highlight the fact that i love how you are so nonchalant about just leaving your career and you know <laughs> taking care of your kids embracing motherhood and then coming back and creating such a significant mark and that's an amazing story and a story that a lot of people can take away from thank you so much it's thank just you. like i'm getting started now so let's yeah. see and what's more there and more yeah always. yeah thank you so much for having me it was such thank a pleasure you. talking to you thank you thank you so much neha thank, thank you thank you